Hello, fellow humans, and today I want to talk about your first tier 10. If you already have a tier 10, what was your first one? And if you don't, let's see which one you should be getting. Obviously, what you don't want to do is you don't want to get anything that is a tank destroyer or a light tank, because those are hard to play. So you want to go for a medium or a heavy tank. After that, you can experiment with light and tank destroyers. I would personally never get a tank destroyer, but that's just me. In the Americans, you have the T-125, which would be a great choice. However, Wargaming completely murdered this vehicle. Well, unless it gets rebuffed, it currently isn't a very good choice. However, if it does get buffed in the future, it will be an absolutely amazing choice. Pretty much, if you don't want a heavy tank, this is this is the one to go for. This is the medium tank to get. However, the problem with the this line is the Panther 2 is a bit shit. What I would recommend, try out the tier 6, try out the tier 7. If you enjoy that, you'll be fine with the tier 10. If you don't enjoy those, you won't like the tier 10 either. In terms of the Russian uh, tech tree, you got the IS-7, you got the IS-4. I wouldn't recommend the two medium tanks. However, these two are solid choices, not first pick either, in my opinion. I would definitely go for the E100 as the most recommended tank from my side. It's not really the most fun tank to play, but it's a very easy tank to play. But we'll get into that later. Don't get anything British. Don't get anything French. Most of them are very specialized tanks that are difficult to play. Type 71 is not an amazing vehicle. However, it is a good choice as well because of its armor, right? The gun's miserable however the armor is very good and that's kind of what you want right you want a vehicle that can take shots for you if you make a mistake in let's say a leopard one you're gonna get instantly punished and destroyed however if you make a mistake in a tank that has a lot of armor that armor might still cover for you unless you reverse out backwards chinese you also have the 113 which is a solid choice as well if you want something a bit more unique 3400 dpm absolutely excellent gun in this tank and uh, sort of like the reverse Type 71, where you have an absolutely amazing bonkers gun, not that great armor. Then we go to the Europeans, we got the 60TP, which is among with the E100 and the E50M, the three primary choices I would make, because obviously it's a very easy tank to play. You have high alpha damage, you got very good armor, you got decent mobility. Don't get the Progetto, don't get the TVP. Kronvang... It's it's a okay tank, but it's definitely not a great choice to start with. Now we go with the E50M, which is a great choice to start with if you want a medium tank and you don't want to drive around in a slow heavy. However, it is more difficult to do that. Now, my first tier 10 was the T125, but that's a very poor choice at the moment, given Wargaming's random hate for that vehicle for some reason. So, let's see. Unfortunately, our team is also not very competent, especially one of our mediums. That is what you don't want to do. The important thing about playing a medium is to know what your role is. And that is not to go city, because if you do go city, then first of all, you look like a clown. And you probably also are. Now, let's see what we can do out here. It's a 3v2, basically. Oh, he's coming. Oh, come on. Come on, Centurion. Be a good boy. He's redeeming himself. That is... He's doing it. Now, E50M, unlike the Leopard 1, this thing actually has room for error. It has very good armor. It has 8 degrees of gun depression. It's got solid turret. You might want to move it back and forth, right? Because the turret can be penned with premium rounds. So you might want to be careful of uh, what you're doing there. Mobility is also very good. And it is a very heavy boy. So you can even ram enemy tanks. Don't ram mouses. Ram Leopards if you can. Obviously, so let's see if we can do that in this instance right here. Angle left and right, and that is 600 damage right there into his face. And that one bounces, because why not? So, let's see. It might still be my kill, probably. There we go. Beautiful. And that is how you win a match. You see, you get the advantage, you get rid of their mediums, and then boom, easy win. Okay, now the 183 is very much over there, and uh, he does only 500 damage with the Hesh, because this thing is very well armored. And uh, watching 183s die is one of my very much favorite past times. And the other one is pissing off clowns. Here we go. It's getting rid of this one. Beautiful. And now we're behind the heavies as well, where they can't do anything about it. Now that MX could technically clip me, but he's not going to, given the state of his play. So, all we gotta do, track him, and... Uh, Mate, look up. I'm here. Here. Hello. Come on. Okay. Come. Come on. Come on. You. You can. You can. Okay. He finally saw me. That's at least an improvement. Um. Come on. Okay. You can do this. No, you can't pen that. <laughs> come. On, come on, Amex. Please. Don't. Don't be like that. Do better. I. I believe you. You can. You can do better than this. Come on. But as you can see, just like that, 
five kills, four and a half K damage. This thing is a monster, and I definitely recommend picking it up. If you don't have it already, absolutely get it. If you're starting off with the 10, can be a good choice. However, be wary of the Panther 2. That's an ace as well. Not too bad. Here we go with the E100, which is a very great choice, really. And it's very easy to angle as well. All you gotta do, point the gun over the track, and it's angled. That's it. And then wiggle you back and forth. That, that's all you need to know about this tank. And the same goes for the rest of the line as well, with the Tiger the Tiger 2. Pretty much work the same. So... It's very easy and very straightforward, and also line consistency is something that's very important, right? If the tier 7 plays the same as the tier 10, that is absolutely great. And that's one of the biggest problems with the T57 Heavy line, which 57 Heavy is an absolutely amazing vehicle. However, the line's not very consistent, so I wouldn't really recommend that, because you start off with a light tank, and then you go to a medium tank, and then you end up with a heavy tank. So, not really that great. However, 57 Heavy, also a great tank to, to get as well, um, if you know what you're doing later. Now, this tank, again, what I'm doing here. Gun over the track wheel, wiggle back and forth. That's the easiest way to do. You don't really need to do any more um, to make it work. Now, at this point, again, angle it, wiggle it, all that kind of stuff. I7's pushing forward. You have a gun that is very good at penning stuff because you got good heat rounds. You got 640 alpha damage, which means you don't have to peek a lot. And if you peek someone, you're most likely to have an advantage in terms of the, the alpha damage, which is very good, obviously, because... The more um, advantages the tank itself has, the less you'll have to do on top of it. Let's see if we can get another shot on the 57. There we go. Like, obviously, if you have this thing and you trade with one with a tank that has 400 alpha damage or 460 alpha damage, like an I6, uh, I7, rather, sorry, um, then you'll have the advantage if you hit that you're short, obviously. So it does do very well at that. It's not the most fun tank to play, obviously, but it is definitely a very strong vehicle to have. Gun depression is also another issue that I'm personally not a big fan of this tank. Gotta say, for me, it's just too slow and too clumsy. However, what makes me not like this tank is exactly what makes it good for a beginner. It's easy to play. You know, you can put it in one spot and you play it there and it'll work. Now, obviously, it doesn't play itself. You still need to know how it works. Ideally, you do not want to go to bad sides of map, like Hellas or Fort Despair. You don't want to go to the to the bad heavy side, even in a vehicle like this one, because you don't have the map control there. You don't want to do that. So, yeah. Let's see what we can do. 4 vs 5 here. We got a 183, which I very much enjoy seeing die. Um, but that is one of my, my things that very much makes me enjoyable of tanks blitz is when i see a 183 player just die that is just wonderful so don't get a 183 don't do that ever like if you get a 183 we're not friends anymore no but just just don't it's a horrible tank it also has the lowest hit rate among tier 10 tanks so you know aim so let's see super conqueror oof should be pretty easy. As you can see, like I'm not, even, I'm not even doing ether, right? and I'm at three k damage. So all I gotta do is just peek, take a shot, go back, peek again. It's very straightforward, very simple, nothing special about it. All you gotta do is not get yourself focused by three tanks at the same time, and then you're golden. That's how blitz works. Don't think a bit. If you're fighting three tanks at the same time, you're not a hero. You're a bit dumb. So let's see. Unless they're all one shots and you're teeth to heavy, then it works. But don't do it. Ideally, you want to have 1v1 engagements that you can win. That's what you want to go for. And with the E100, that's relatively straightforward because you have the alpha damage, you have the armor. All you're going to do is not get yourself overwhelmed. That's it. That's your only job. Don't get overwhelmed by the enemy. That's it. That's all you got to do. So, let's see. And there's a 183. Can we... I mean, I probably don't roll high enough to kill him, but... Uh, which is very unfortunate because I would have loved to do that. But T100 is going to get him anyway. And that's 5k damage, just like that, because... Like, I'm not even trying, but like... And for the last one, we got this very nice replay in the 60TP from Extinction right here, because, I mean, it's it's good, so let's take it. Now, the 60TP is another very good choice. Select the E100, you have very high alpha damage, you got a solid-ish enough mobility, it's not amazing, but as you can see, very strong turret armor. Accuracy is not the greatest, that's a, that's a big problem with those, those guns, that you want to make sure to aim your shot, because here's the thing, aiming for 3 seconds is better than reloading for 20 or 15 or whatever your current reload is because you might still end up with 75% crew things like that 
We'll talk about the equipment at the end. Don't worry. So, you still ideally, if you get a tier 10, you ideally want to try to get that thing to 100% crew. You can't have it stock unless it's the E100. That's a big problem with the E100. It is, it can be stock with the mouse gun. Not great. So, 6 TP is a great choice as well. If you don't want to have to fight through the E100's stock gun, which can be somewhat painful. This thing doesn't have that problem. And the 53 TP and the 50 TP are absolutely lovely tanks as well at tier 8 and tier 9. And they basically play the same. So, it's pretty easy to get into this line as well. Now, what's important for this tank? Ideally, try to hide the lower plate. It's very small. However, it's very vulnerable. The upper plate can be penned by most heat rounds in the game. So, ideally, you only want to peek to third. However, again, you have the alpha damage advantage, right? You can out-trade the enemy, which is lovely, which is what you're supposed to do. And now, at this point, what we can see here, again, just pushing forward, 3k damage right there. And um, the enemy is are doing pretty well because, I mean, they went city. Which is not what you want to do. Especially on the map like this. You don't want to go into the city. Because, you know, you'll just lose the map control. It works sometimes, but it doesn't work enough to make it viable. Basically, that's how that works. Now, 3v3. And a circumnavigation of the middle of the map later. You've also got tungsten on this vehicle. If you use the tungsten shells, you can get even higher alpha damage to profit off it. Which is very nice. Now, I wouldn't use... Tungsten and Adrenaline on the same vehicle. Multi-kit, repair kit. I know, it's interesting to use both of them to get that advantage. However, I think, especially for newer players, the safety is more important than the potential of damage that you can do with, let's say, both Tungsten and Adrenaline. So at this point, what you're gonna do, all you're gonna do is shoot the enemy. The IS-7 does have a good gun. It is a good tank if you know what you're doing with it. However, you have very low DPM and lower alpha damage than the E100 and the 60 TP. So at that point, I don't see it as a better choice. It has very strong armor, very troll armor. However, anyone with three brain cells and three heat rounds is gonna go straight through the RS7. So there's that. Penetration is a choice. So you just have to know how to do it, basically. So, don't get that out of your head. It's, you know, all you gotta do is know where to pin and how. So, at this point, there's only 183 left. And I love letting 183s die. So, let's do that. So, there he is. And there goes the Centurion. Now, with Tungsten and Shells again. Very high alpha damage right there. Over 700 damage with one shot. Which is beautiful. You know, because the thing is, if you do three shots with this vehicle, you're already doing above average. And that's all you need to do, really. So, that's that's it. It's very easy to play. Is it also easy to equip? Yes. Let's have a look. And then this is how it looks with the E50M. Again, standard consumables, standard ammo and provisions. And then, very simple equipment right here. I'm using the enhanced armor just to get it a bit of the turret up. But um, you can you can use either of those two. It's basically, unless your tank has no armor, you always use improved assembly. Otherwise, it doesn't really make a difference. So, that's it. What is your first tier 10? What will it be? Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one. Goodbye.